A former Atlanta Police Department employee says she was fired. Yeah. Fired, y'all, in retaliation for her daughter's critique of how the department handled the 2022 shooting that left a man dead involving music executive Shaka Zulu, who is the manager for Ludacris. Zulu was initially charged with murder. The shooting was ruled as self-defense, and after a long time, the charges were dropped. Well, Rhonda Frost was the deputy director of public affairs for the Atlanta Police Department. She says in a lawsuit that this video of her daughter, Shanae Hall, led to her being wrongfully terminated. Here's some of that video. I'm trying to figure out how all of these law enforcement officers and DAs and, and everybody that's supposed to know the law watched a video of a 52-year-old man being jumped by four men in a stand-your-ground state and charged him with murder, aggravated assault. I'm trying to figure out how the fuck do you come up with that after watching this video? These five guys right here, one, two, three, that's a hit, four, five, are, I'm assuming waiting for Shaka. Shaka's over here in the corner getting his guest situated. Follow along, cause it's gonna be a lot of moving parts. So, do right here. Now, that's the video right there. Again, Rhonda Frost has filed a lawsuit. Uh, her daughter, Shanae Hall, joins us right now. Rhonda was supposed to join us, but she is being advised by counsel uh, not uh, to publicly talk. Shanae, glad to have you here. So, all right, so walk us through. First of all, you dropped this video. Uh, many of us remember the shooting well because uh, the story went all over the place. Um, Shock was fighting for his life. Um, uh, he eventually survives. Uh, matter of fact, I saw him a couple of weeks ago, the TV One, Urban One Honors in Atlanta. Charges were later dropped. I think it took almost a couple of years for the charges to be dropped. So you had posted this video on Instagram and what did they, then what happened? The blowback against your mom because you were you, I mean, again, you were, what you were really talking about in the video, you were really talking about the prosecution. Right. But go ahead. I hadn't even indicted them yet. So what happened was uh, Shaka Zulu got in, uh, charged on like September 16th or September 17th. I made that video on September 18th, challenging what APD had charged Shaka Zulu with. But not only that, three people got shot that night you know what i'm saying so i'm like wait what about the other what about the other people you know what i'm saying what about the guy that actually shot his friend twice he didn't get he didn't get charged and then shaka zulu got shot in the back so i take that back it was three five three people that got shot but not three individuals so anyway um we're sitting there looking at the video and I'm thinking to myself, how is this even possible? And then the girl that gets punched in her face multiple times because she was trying to help get these men off of Shaka, it, it was literally mind blowing. And so I made the video. And then right after that video, I made another video that talked about stand your ground. And this was in October, right? November 15th, uh, Traymond gets indicted. The man who punched the girl in the face. He gets indicted in November 30th, APD sends my mom home. Darren Shearbaum, who is the chief of police, thought that it would be better for her to be sent home and investigated to figure out how I got the video. But the problem is it was all under the guise of, oh, let's look at her work performance, even though she has a stellar work performance. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's stop right there. How did she get the video? Wasn't the video made public? I made the video public. <laughs> well, again, so so video so it was not public. Okay. Before, all right. I knew somebody who had access to it. Okay. So I got a hold of it. So 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 they had not publicly released this surveillance video. First of all, Correct. first of all, let's be real clear: the surveillance video did not come from. It was not police surveillance video. That was Correct. that that was the cameras from outside of the restaurant, right? Correct. Okay, go ahead. Correct. 
so you already you already putting it together. This is not even owned by APD, right? But they were so disheveled by the fact that I came out with this information and pointing out that they erred in their their choice to charge Shaka and not charge anybody else. Right. That yeah, that that's the so whole so that's so that's like so that's so that's like okay, shooting happens, and I, as a journalist. I mm -hmm. I get access, which has happened before. I get access to the video, and then I put it out. Okay, right. but they're going, oh, wait a minute. She's the daughter of this person with the police department, and oh, hmm, mama must have did it. Go ahead. But yeah, that's that's the whole thing, though. My mom doesn't have access to it. She's a civilian APD employee. So she didn't have access to the video footage. She didn't have access to body worn camera. The problem is they put out this whole, let's investigate her for bullying a, a, a subordinate employee. Let's um, look into her work performance. But in real life, I have 700 emails that chronicle exactly what was going on. And they were not looking to see if she bullied anybody. They were not looking at her work performance to see if she came in tardy, to see if she had absent days. They were looking for me and how I got the video. That is a problem. That is, is against every violation that the city of Atlanta has in place. Like they literally have codes that's not what you use taxpayers' dollars for, to look into somebody's child that you didn't want them to report what you did wrong. That is what the, where the problem lies. Like literally, Roland, they have documents saying, look into the Mark 43 system, reach out to this detective, ask how she got the video, look at um, body-worn camera, see if she had access to that. Darren Shearbaum literally says, see if there's a paper trail, anything that can be audited, go and see if she looked at that. But remember, my mom is sitting at home. Now, 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 now they're, home. Sending, they're sending these emails back, I take it, on the Atlanta e Police Department email, which are public documents. So a freedom of information request, they have to turn those things over, and all of a sudden, now you're able to see, oh, y'all are literally questioning how does she get the video? That's called y'all dumb. For 10 months, 10 months. They send her home November 30th. So let's follow this. November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September 10th was her official fire date, even though they showed up at her house unannounced on July 10th and said, hey, give me all your equipment. You no longer work for APD effective immediately. And I have the letter that literally says the email that says, oh, thank you for taking care of that. Great job. Did you not think that anybody was going to see this? Let's be sensitive. And then Roland, here's the craziest part. They actually put that she resigned on her personnel file, which we also got via open records. They said Rhonda Frost resigned on September 10th. Well, how did a resignation is voluntary. Well, how come you were at her house then July 10th? knocking on her door saying, we need the equipment, we need your badge, we need everything back. How is that possible? So it's just a whole bunch of lies, deceit. Um, Peter Amen, who is in the building, who is, works with uh, Darren Shearbaum, literally working hand in hand to get her out of the building and never to return again when she's done nothing wrong. The director of human resources for the city of Atlanta in writing says Rhonda did nothing wrong, send her back to work. Starting from like January, February, March, she did nothing wrong, send her back to work. She did nothing wrong, send her back to work. Um, the, the, he also says, you're putting the city in jeopardy of being sued. You're putting the, the city in legal jeopardy. This is in writing. This is for the public to see. And this is what taxpayers' dollars are going to day in and day out. Every time that they file a motion moving forward, there's taxpayers' dollars going to support this buffoonery that they know that what they did. They know the wrong that they did. They know my mom did nothing wrong. You know why I know? Because it's in writing. And now, that's the problem. Now, what they also don't realize is while this is happening, you decided to go to law school. <laughs> yeah, I was actually in law school, so... This happened June 2022, um, the actual shooting. And so that would have made me like a 1L year because I'm getting ready to graduate in um, a couple weeks now. So it's almost over. That's how long this has been going on. 
And when you sue the city, for those that don't know about suing the government, you have to put them on notice. You have to send like an antelitum notice or something to let them know, hey, you're going to get sued or EEOC, something that says you're going to get sued if you don't do something about this. These people have had months and months and months to respond and did not. And now this is even funnier. I just heard from our uh, heard from my mom's attorneys that Darren Shearbaum, who was the chief, Peter Amen and Chada Spikes, who have all been mentioned in the lawsuit, uh, they don't want to accept they don't want to accept service while at work. So I'm like, you're talking all this mess for all these months, but you don't want to accept this lawsuit. Go on ahead, chief. Go ahead and let them let them serve you right there at your office. So then we could be done with it and you get your, your 21 days or 30 days, whatever it is, and we could keep it pushing. But they don't want to be served at work, which is crazy because that's where all of this was going on. Everybody was so confident. Everybody was so bold. Everybody was talking so much mess in all of these emails. And remember, I have 700 of them to prove them. And I've had nothing but time because I'm in law school. And so during my free time, I was reading emails about them saying, oh, what about this? Go, go talk to Detective Finney. Go talk to Detective Lowe. I talked to Detective Lowe. I reached out to Detective Lowe. I was the one that was reaching out to people to figure out how you got it this wrong. My mom had <laughs> nothing to do with this. Now, this is a federal, this is a federal lawsuit, right? Correct. All right. Uh, Robert, <laughs> what do you make of this? <laughs> Not surprising. Not surprising is what I uh, uh, have to say about this, because we've seen this happen before in Atlanta, and we'll continue to see this happening in Atlanta. Uh, we have to understand that there is a culture within the APD um, that extends to criminal defendants, that, re, uh, that extends to whistleblowers, that extends to individuals that seek to reform the system, where we see actions like this take place very often. That thin blue line uh, turns into a, a, a thick black sharper, sharpie line uh, when mm -hmm. it comes to these questions of litigation or people who are trying to make the types of internal changes needed for better policing. And I, I, I stand by the sister and everything that she is doing to defend her mother, but I think we need to have more actions of this nature within the city, because we've seen that uh, simple political reforms are not enough, uh, that Whenever there are politicians to seek to reform the APD, uh, we see what happened to Keisha Lance Bottoms. We see what happens to other politicians. They get ran out of office um, because the APD has the power to simply allow crime to go crazy for about six months, uh, which uh, causes the <coughs> re-election. So we have to have people who are willing to participate in the type of litigation necessary to uh, to spur the type of change which this will spur. And I'm, I'm hoping that this will get other people who have gone through similar situations to stand up and say it's not just enough to ruminate and be angry at home. Let's get together and start litigating these things out so we can create the changes necessary. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. That, and that's the part that we found um, even when we got to the point where we were looking for an attorney. I'm so glad that my mom was able to get um, A.J. Mitchell, who I heard is your frat brother, Roland. Um, you know, on, I mean, on look, if mind. you're looking for a great attorney, you might as well call an alpha and not call any oh, other God. any other fraternity. Oh, God. <laughs> he, 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 I'm just, I'm grateful for him Lord. because my mom got, is now at least en route to getting some of the justice that I feel like she deserves. But I think, uh, like your uh, co-host just said, it's it's about people standing up. What they did, they tried to send me a message. Sheerbaum tried to send Shanae a message and said, look at Shanae. Yes, your mom works for us. And no, I'm not going to burn a cross on your front yard anymore, but I am going to retaliate. I'm going to retaliate by making sure she doesn't have a job. <clears throat> I'm going to take away her livelihood. I'm going to take away her ability to pay bills. I'm going to take away what he thought he was going to do is take away my voice. And it, it didn't work out like that. It, did, it didn't work out like that, Roland. <laughs> uh, let's go to the Kappa lawyer. Scott. The excellent Kappa lawyer. Uh, the marginal, but it's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, so, so to your guest, it, it, it sounds like you got receipts, you got the evidence. To a third party like me on the outside looking in, who's been in the law game and criminal defense for over 32 years, here's a question for you. That seems like a lot of work and a lot of conspiracy and a lot of efforts on the part of APD <clears throat> to have your mother uh, removed from her position. And when, when you see a set of facts like that, then it begs the following question. What's the motive? I, I mean, why go through all of that time, money, energy, and now a lawsuit that at least based on she's going to get past summary judgment, 
I mean, why does a department go through all that just to remove one person who apparently is a, was a high performing employee? Well, actually, because actually, I, you I, and a video before she goes. What you called out? Well, the police department gets criticized all the time. So, did you come up with a motive for this? No, no but before she answer that, I, I'll say this before she answers. First of all, let me set the scene. This was a very high profile shooting. It got mm -hmm. lots of attention. Uh, this, okay. in, this, is, this involves the manager of one of Atlanta's biggest rappers. Uh, and so, and then there was a lot of, when, I remember when this story happened, it was a lot of folks, okay, what happened, what happened, what happened, what happened, what happened, uh, and no information was getting out. And I remember when Shanae dropped the video, video comes out and then it was like, what the hell? What, like, like what, what the hell were they doing? Um, right. And why? And, and there literally was no conversation ever at any point. They charged him with murder. Correct, Shanae? That's correct. And so all of us and uh, and then, oh. and he couldn't um, he, the places <laughs> where he couldn't go. And so it was a lot of focus on this. Shanae, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. So what what happened? Remember, nobody had access to the video, so they were able to charge him and what they thought was gonna go on their merry way, right? And, and that's the problem with a lot of police departments. You just, whatever black man will do, and especially the most powerful one that's sitting in the room. And, 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 then, and the initial, let me just add it here, and, and the initial narrative, again, because I remember this vividly, the initial narrative that was established was that Shaka Zulu got into a fight with some men in a parking lot, pulled out his gun, mm -hmm. killed, shot at the other men, killed them, Oh, manager of rapper, a uh, manager of Ludacris, uh, charged with murder, and so that's yeah. all anybody knew. Now, why he was fighting for his life in the hospital? That was a narrative, and the whole bit to time was kind of like, what happened? What happened? No one knew what happened. It was like fight, gun gets pulled out, gets shot. Shanae drops the video, then the whole narrative changes to, oh damn, he got jumped. Okay. It was self defense. Go ahead. Okay, Absolutely. And, the, and the video certainly certainly shows that. I guess my ultimate point is, it would have been easier for the police department to do the right thing right. and to go by the book than all of this other stuff. And it, it, it would have been easier, and it would have been easier to share, again, this, it would have been easier to share the video with the public. Right. It, it, was, it was sort of like, no, 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 we ain't releasing nothing, we ain't releasing nothing. And it was like, when, when she got the video, we were like, what y'all doing? The, the truth was easier than the lie. Right. Think about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. The truth was and easier than the lie. But go right ahead, uh, Shanae. So no, so when you say that, when you ask the question, that's the same thing. It almost seems surreal. So as I'm looking at them, and I posted my very last video after we got that written uh, memo, the internal memo, I said the same thing. You could have just said I messed up. You could have just said we got it wrong. You could have said, you know, now that the DA has came out and said X, Y, Z, we're going to make this right. But when egos get involved, and from what I gather, Darren Sheerbaum, he's a, a, a white chief in the South, and it's he's a, the overseer of a predominantly black city. There's nothing worse than having a, a black woman or a black person call you out publicly, loudly, that get shared <clears throat> nationally, internationally, uh, with people that knew of Shaka Zulu, knew of Ludacris, knew of this these murder charges, and to be wrong. So their investigation was never about my mom. It was how did I get the video, which is even more disturbing, because instead of you sitting around trying to figure out how we got it this wrong, you're trying to figure out how I got the evidence that came out. And that's like, like Roland said at the very beginning, that's not even your video. Why, do you, why are you so involved in other, and what is not APD's property? That's the mm -hmm. question that I have. And, and in fact, in, in fact, I just want to just show folks the framing. And I think before I go to Rebecca, uh, this is sort of the framing. Give me one second. So this is WSB Channel 2. So th this was the headline. Go to my iPad. Longtime rapper of Atlanta rap, longtime manager of Atlanta rapper Ludacris among three people shot in Buckhead. So then police say an accomplished Atlanta music executive and manager to Atlanta rapper Ludacris was one of several people shot outside a popular Buckhead restaurant early Monday morning. Then when you go into the story, uh, it says uh, it says here, 
Police say there appears to have been an argument or altercation that happened and the victims were shot in the parking lot of the shopping center. So, mm-hmm. and it goes back in January, the Hawks honored Zulu for his community service, praising him for being a positive leader in Metro Atlanta. The other two victims' identities have not been released. So that's the initial story. But check this out. This then is the, ne- the next story that comes, now remember, the, the previous, this is November 22nd, 2023. The previous story, uh, the previous story, um, the previous story, um, would have been uh, around the previous story was, yeah, was a year earlier. So all of a sudden yeah. you see this story, Little Chris is longtime manager, Taco Zulu killed 23 year old in self-defense. Prosecutors say. Mm-hmm. Now, now the, the crazy thing was, okay. again, if early on, if early on, if you actually release the video, the public will go, hold up, wait a minute, that was a fight. They went after right. him, said defense. Right. And so then a whole year, and I, and in fact, he was um, uh, at one point, uh, Shaka was out of the city. He literally went to Florida to recuperate. Mm-hmm. I happened to be speaking at an event there, was invited uh, to a, a, a get together. Uh, I had met him before, got an opportunity just to chat with him, spend some time with him. This brother literally, was on lockdown, Rebecca, for a year. Movement, mobility, couldn't go certain places. His life was altered and over his head for an entire year was a murder charge when the video that Shanae dropped showed it was self-defense from that night. This This was just crazy. Absolutely. Well, I hear everyone saying that it would have been easier just to tell the truth in the first place, but we know this is anti-Blackness. If people mm-hmm. weren't racist, the world would go around much faster. The world would be a better place. And we know that's what this thing is. So, Shanae, my question to you is taking on anti-Blackness, especially at an institution, a law enforcement, <coughs> level, it comes at a personal cost. So my question for you is, you know, there is strategies with taking on institutions and anti-blackness, what was your strategy? What was your thinking in releasing the video under your name instead of releasing the video under a pseudonym or anonymously? You know what? I wish I had some skills that made me think beyond the initial, oh my God, I'm releasing this in my own name. This is something I was passionate about. And it's it's not just these types of, you know, not just the Shaka Zulu thing. When I did a video four or five years ago on why the NCAA needs to be paying athletes. Um, I had gotten a lot of followers, including, you know, Deion Sanders and, and big name celebrities that were like, wow, you actually stood up for something that you believed in. So when I saw the video, I was livid. I was like, how do you charge this man after being stomped into the ground? You know, and, and with my whole one year of lawyerly skills, I was like, I know for sure that this is a, at a reasonable person standard that any reasonable person, you, I, whomever, my father, if you come out and someone 20 in their 20s, and for most of us on here, we're in our 40s and 50s, and you start putting your hands on me, you guys jump me. If I have a weapon on me, I'm shooting everybody, everybody in proximity that is causing me harm. So the way that he handled it to only fire one shot. And again, three people were shot. You had Art, um, Mr. Bennett, who was the one that passed away. You had uh, Willie, who was the one that got shot in the arm by his friend. And then you had Shaka Zulu. So all three of these people are shot. One is dead. Shaka Zulu is fighting for his life. And then you have Willie, who uh, was the friend of the guy um, who was doing the shooting and no one else is charged. And you have a woman who's mercilessly punched in her face and no one else is charged. And I actually wrote the the mayor a letter. And I, I said, if he was white, if Shaka Zulu was white, don't change any other scenario. Don't change anything else about the, the fact pattern. This man would not have been charged, but he's not white. And so when Darren Shearbaum or whoever reported to the scene, I'm not sure what they looked at. But if they looked at the video footage the same way that I did, that man fought for his life in self-defense. And that the outcome of it, and then not, not only that, though, to turn around and the outcome be you have to fight for your life and now you have to pay money. He had to pay $250,000 for bond. Like Roland just mentioned, he was on house arrest. You have to report to to your probation officer, whomever it is, 
because you defended yourself because your life, literally you're getting kicked in your head, stomped in your face, kicked. You're literally on the ground fighting for your life. And then to turn around, you have to fight the system too. It was wrong. So I didn't think about using a fake name or using any, any fake information. Matter of fact, I added at APD. I was like at APD, at APD, at the DA's office, at anybody that would listen because it was important to me. So I didn't, you know, I, I wish I maybe would have thought about it. My mom might've still had her job, but Right at that moment, all I cared about was justice being served and and Shaka not having to fight for his life in the hospital, fight for his life with the system La and then fight for his freedom. Last question. So is the goal to get your mom jobs back and back pay? Absolutely not. I don't ever want her working for APD. My mom actually went back to school and is in paralegal school at Emory University to come and work with me once I get my law degree in a, in a couple of weeks. Um, so we're going to work together. She had to get on. I had to get her off the other side. So the goal is that somebody in APD acts with integrity and does the right thing and pays her what she's lost, pays her for her pain and suffering and just does the right thing. I need somebody, Patrick Pendleton, I think was the only person who's the HR director that said, stop this. She did nothing wrong. And PD now knows that she did nothing wrong. Well, and unfortunately, taxpayers got to cut a check for stupidity. All right. Sure, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Fanbase is pioneering a new era of social media and investment. This next generation social app has already raised $10 million and has just opened a new round to invest. For details on how to invest, visit startengine.com slash fanbase or scan the QR code. Another way we're giving you the freedom to be you without limits.